Hey everyone, Scott here. Well, I'm looking at a new game today called Unturned. It's developed by a guy by the name of Nelson. Uh, it's a one-man development team. It's often been described as a cross between Minecraft and DayZ. Uh, I really did enjoy Minecraft, although I didn't really like the premise of Day uh, DayZ because it was an MMO-style game that, you know, zombies weren't your biggest worry. It was other players you really couldn't trust anyone because everybody would kill you for your stuff. And it was like, that didn't interest me. But this game really did because... Like Minecraft, you can set up your own servers, you can kind of control your population a little bit more. And as such, you can kind of set up your own game rules, like you can have it so it's just say, a bunch of friends against the environment, or you can do PvP stuff, whereas everyone's for themselves, or square two people off into any teams. Anyways, it's a lot more controlled than, say, an MMO-style system like DayZ has. Uh, so again, I just wanted to kind of show this game off, because again, it is an indie developer, it's, all, it's one guy who does all of it. Uh, I really would like to introduce this game to my viewers if any of them haven't seen it by now. It is, again, one of those projects that I would like to see come into fruition. Right now, there is a game there. Uh, currently, I'm playing version 2.2.5. However, at the time that I'm recording this, Nelson is working on version 3, which is a huge upgrade in terms of inventory, gameplay, and the map the map systems. And uh, So, as a such, in the next, by the time you watch this video, it might be up to 3.0, and I'll probably do an update video for that as well, just to give you the introduction. I don't want to get into any tutorials or how-tos or anything like this game right now as it stands, because it's this map is currently on its way out and all that kind of stuff. But right now, I am running around the map looking for supplies. As you can see here, I'm coming up on a helicopter crash site, and military equipment in this game tends to be a little bit more valuable than the civilian stuff, because... Well, it's basically it's military grade. It's going to be higher grade. It's going to be better armor, better clothing, better weapons, that kind of stuff. So you want to hit the, but it also comes with the military zombies, which are the, the ones in the, the military fatigues are a little tougher than the civilian grade of them, which again are, you know, a little less quality, a little easier to take down. But uh, again, military grade stuff is more what you are after. Right here, I'm looking at the stuff on the ground here. There's some raw explosives. There's some med kits, things like that. You gotta worry about your survival in this game, you gotta keep yourself fed, and you gotta keep yourself hydrated, as well as you gotta keep yourself healthy, you don't wanna get too much zombie toxin, or you're gonna end up, you know, turning into one or dying as a result. You also have to make sure your health stays good, and it's all just about taking care of yourself, really. In a PvP scenario, it gets a lot more hairy, because you got players also trying to get at you and they'll shoot back and things like that whereas the zombies are a little easier the uh the future plans for this game does include more zombie kind of horde modes where you kind of protect your your encampment from uh from massive waves when the moon gets full and things like that that stuff's been kind of discussed in development right now i'm just running through town collecting supplies but there is another huge element to this game and that's crafting a lot of the supplies that you need can be crafted through finding parts and materials throughout the game, and some materials can be collected from uh, from scavenging, from manipulation with tools and other things, and just from raw resources. Like you can knock down trees to get wood and things like rocks. You can pick on rocks to get uh, well rocks, which are also their crafting item. But you can also melt them down into metals and things like that. So this is the structure that I've built. It's kind of a a base that I've set up. It's got a lot of storage and things like that. Uh, there's some farm equipment in here too, things of that nature. I keep myself fairly well three, so we uh, we didn't have to worry so much about supplies and things like that. So we could just go out looking for the good stuff. Now, as you can see here, I just hopped into a van that I've got parked there, and we're going to take off and go for another run. I think I was looking for something in particular in this game. I can't remember what exactly, but nevertheless. Uh, the map that I'm playing on is PEI, which for those of you that aren't familiar with Canada stands for Prince Edward Island. Um, it's an island off the east coast of the country. Um, and this is just kind of an, a map loosely based upon that, that area of, the, of uh, Canada. And that's another reason why I kind of want to support this game is because me being a Canadian as well, kind of support the homegrown talent as they say. So anyways, uh, this is only two maps that you can play on for this version of the game. In 3.0 they're adding a world map editor which will allow players to make their own maps. And uh, as such you can kind of tailor the map to whatever kind of game you're going after. And I'm going after some more military gear 
going through some military zombies and things like that. There's a, a an outbridge out here that uh, you can go to the end, but then there's an achievement on the far end, I believe. But it's quite a walk to get there. <laughs> Uh, another thing I want to talk about too is like the customization of weapons like most melee weapons are just that for now But guns they have customization spots on most of them. They have like scope sites and rails and you know tactical spots for underslung equipment and stabilizer grips and things like that just to Make the shooting a lot more interesting, and I mean it's pretty solid. It's it's still fairly simplistic shooting in this game It's not quite as complex as you'd find in some other shooters, but it's satisfying enough and you kinda get sort of attached to the weapons as you build them because they sort of become yours then which then means you gotta haul them around and you can use them like for example one item I'm particularly looking for is a bayonet for a weapon so that I can put a bayonet on my rifle and then I don't have to worry so much about carrying around this fire axe to whack zombies with I don't have to worry so much about carrying around this fire axe to whack zombies with that being said the uh, I'm using a maple strike gun I believe in this game right now uh, currently, uh, when I made this video, I might have been still running with an outfield or a smaller bolt-action rifle that that wasn't quite as powerful, but still would get the job done. Now, like most zombie survival games, you want to aim for the head. Zombies, you got to destroy the brain in order to really bring them down. <laughs> uh, no, it goes the same for this one. You want to kind of aim for the head because you can take them down. You also can uh, build up your skill sets in here. I'll show a little bit later where there's actually a bit of an RPG element where you build up your character a little bit and you can make him a little little tougher, a little smarter, a little more resilient and things like that. As you can see here I'm just picking up a red dot sight that you can actually put on a gun if I wanted to. Uh, you can get all kinds of placeable items like sandbags and ooh, that's a, for NATO. That's actually for some of the military grade rifles that uh, I'll be sprouting a little bit later. Tracer rounds are just like that. They glow when you shoot them so you can actually see their projectile path. Well, back to the vehicle, and I'm just uh, skipping ahead here to show you some of the more locations. This is a military base in this uh, this map, and just come to a dead stop by hitting the wall and hop out. And I'm just going to clear the area of zombies now. As you can see, are kind of backpedaling and circling around, because zombies don't make a lot of noise besides a growl when you first agitate them. And then they kind of make some noise when they're attacking, but that's about it. I've been hitting the back a couple of times and kind of mess you up real quick if you're not careful. Now this is one of the more equipment heavy locations in the game where you can kind of find stuff that might be of great value to you including medical supplies, military grade hardware, all that kind of stuff. Um, you also got to keep in mind in this game that ooh vaccine and antibiotics that was a good run. Those are good meds. In any case I digress. Um, you got There's a day and night cycle. It obviously gets harder to see at night uh, you can get things like flashlights, tactical lights to sling under your weapons. You can even get a coal miner's lamp on your head. But, you know, obviously if you're running around with a light on, you attract zombies. And if even worse, if you're running around in a PvP scenario with light on at night, people can see it for a ways away. So you basically light yourself up as a target. So I just picked up what's called a Pro 90, which is obviously a rip off of the real world uh, P90. Um, to avoid copyright infringement, obviously. I decided to fire it up and see what it was like here. Give it a quick test. I'll put it in my equipment bar here. I'm running with a, a bolt action rifle there. It's called an outfield. Uh, so I slap this sucker on. Give it a test shot. I got a fair amount of bullets with it, so do it. And now I'm just playing with my coal miner's lamp. Uh, it's going to be dark soon on this map, so you might not see things too great coming up here. But uh, there's four of these towers, and this is a good example of the attachment system. You can check your scopes, you can put that red dot sight I found on earlier, and now when I pull it up I've got a little bit of a uncluttered crosshair, or a little bit more of a better crosshair for this kind of thing. Plus you drop the old sight, so you got to make sure you pick it up. And that's the other thing when you're reloading your weapons in this one. If you just hit the reload key, you drop the empty clip on the ground, and that's actually bad. You want to keep your clips if you can, because you can reload them with boxes of bullets, and that will... Uh, then you can just keep reusing your clips. Plus, clips currently don't stack. Now, this is actually a big problem in the current version. However, when uh, when the new version 3.0 comes out, they've completely redone the inventory system, so it makes a lot more sense, and it's a lot easier to actually find, carry things around. So anyways, as you can see, the sun setting here, we're going to be moving. That P Pro 90, excuse me, is 
got quite the walk on it, so I don't know if I'll keep using it, but I figured I'd grab it and try it out anyway. Smoking Humvee in the thing, and there's a crowbar on the ground, which is actually a... I think it's owed to the old Half-Life game where Mr. Freeman would run around with a crowbar. Picking up military-grade bullets, there's only three sets of bullets right now. There's shells, there's civilian-grade bullets, and then there's uh, military-grade bullets. Now, shells can then be turned into uh, buckshot or slugs, depending upon how you want to build them, because you actually craft the shells with uh, other components, either nails or bolts, to, to create buckshot or, or uh, slugs, respectively. So checking out the other thing, found some smoke grenades, those are kind of, you can actually craft those I believe. Uh, moving forward here, we're just kind of running around. Now we're at the dead of night and I'm tempted to pull out my light so I can see where I'm going, but the minute I do that, any zombie that sees that light's going to come running right for me. It's a little hairier at night, obviously, <laughs> for various reasons. Still, if you're paying attention, it's still not undoable. Uh, right now I'm playing it on normal mode. There is a difficult mode. And uh, it, right now the game is also free to play. So you can just download it off of Steam like I did and uh, run it and play it and get it familiar with the game. But there's also a $5 gold membership, which is a one-time fee that gives you gold access, which also gives you a couple of additional customization options. And... Uh, Another game mode called Gold, which actually makes the loot a lot better, apparently, which I've been playing as for the last little while. So I'm up in this tower now. Uh, I found a suppressor, which I think is a very rare item, which is very, very valuable, because that will actually make your guns almost silent. As you can see, I also picked up a 6x zoom scope. So I pulled out my outfield. I'm going to slap that on. As you can see, I, right now I've got a flash hider on it. I put a 6x zoom scope on it, and I picked that up, and... Uh, I'm going to stick the suppressor on it, which actually quiets it and I think gets rid of the muzzle flash. The flash hider I hung on to, because it's not bad, it, it'll help prevent uh, bad stuff. But I don't know if you can see it here, but I'm actually able to see little targets in the distance and kind of clean out the, uh, the uh, field of this military base from one of their sniper holes. Much safer than it is running around on the outside. And I kind of like sniping too, I don't mind being able to take one good shot and get rid of a bunch of targets all at once and uh, not have to worry about them sneaking up on me in the middle of the dark I'm just gonna keep going here now I'm mostly using what's known as an outfield in the game it's just basically a bolt action weapon it's a civilian grade and it's fairly relatively easy to come by um, not very powerful not the most ammo efficient weapon as you can see here as I reload I drop my I lose them and if you don't have clips to put in your gun, you can't just put a box of bullets in your gun. Every gun in this game right now needs a clip to go with it. Now I skipped ahead a little bit here because at the dark it was nothing more than just running around collecting. And now I'm just coming through another town, hammering away at some military zombies and then some civilian zombies that are chasing me down. Uh, mostly because as you come roaring into a town with a van like I did, you tend to attract a lot of attention. But that's okay. <laughs> Uh, I usually like to check out the military tents because there's one tent in town here that has a military box that spawns military grade equipment. As you can see here, there's a couple of backpacks and that's how your inventory in this game is set up, is through your clothing. In 2.2.5, which is what I'm playing right now, it's all about the backpack. Your backpack is your storage. You only get very little storage without it. In version 3.0, from what I've seen, it includes uh, inventories in in your clothing as well. So for example, if you're running around with pants, you got a little bit of storage in your pants, you got a little bit of storage on your shirt, you get a little bit of storage on your backpack and things like that. So and like if you're wearing tactical armor, the if you've ever seen like the US military forces or pretty much anyone that uses modern body armor, you've got those vests that you that are covered in velcro that they can put more pockets on and things of that nature. So that kind of gets included in the 3.0 inventory system which is from what I've seen the biggest feature that I'm looking forward to is the the revamp if any of you've ever played some of the original XCOM games or even I think DayZ has an inventory system like that where it makes a lot more sense because then all of a sudden you know your guns take up several inventory slots and your clip but your clips do too and they take up less and your food takes up some and you gotta have the right kind of storage available in order to actually take advantage of it. Now this is just a barricaded house in this town which has a rare loot spawn in it if you climb up the wall there. 
So I figured I'd just grab it and see what was in there. Uh, got an Uzi. Wasn't too impressed by the Uzi. There to grab it because you can actually craft longbows fairly easily. So I did. So this is a quick shot of the map of PEI. And you can actually find this as a pick upable item. This is the locations, and some of them are military and some are civilian. And the towns, depending on what you're looking for, you'll have better luck. Some towns have certain resources available to them, like I think there's Alberton has a botanist where you can get seeds to grow farm and fertilizer and things like that. Right now I'm heading to the airport and I kind of went tearing in and just kind of made a whole bunch of ruckus and before you know it I had a whole slew of zombies on me. Probably not the smartest thing I've ever done. Uh, you can be more stealthy if you want to. I probably would have parked away away and then just kind of sneaked in on the zombies especially if you're wearing uh, gear. If you, any of you guys are fans of The Walking Dead or anything like that you can actually you know how in that they more or less are attracted by noise and smell. Um, whereas in this game they're attracted by light and noise. So, I guess you don't have a stench. So right now this is a bit of the RPG system that you can see here. You can get different skill sets and as you clobber zombies you can gain a little more experience and then you can apply it towards things like sneaky or marksman or crafting. Some crafting recipes are only ever available to you if you have a certain level of crafting which makes it more valuable I guess especially things like storage storage requires you to have at least level one crafting I believe before you can actually make any kind of storage item so we're just pulling back into the airport here or just walking in trying to clean out some of the stuff at the entrance and there's two uh, medical tents there that usually spawn a fair amount of gear in them uh, unfortunately when you go to the 3.0 it's also gonna mean that uh, this island's gone so I'll have to learn a whole new map but that's cool as you can see, I'm just putting a little bit into immunity. As you can see in the bottom there, there's that green bar that's got the radioactive symbol, which actually probably should be a biohazard. So, but that just means that you're getting toxic, and you get toxic from being hit by zombies. The more you're hit by them, the more toxic you become, and then you have to remove it with, with uh, vitamins or vaccines and stuff like that. Now, this is my multiplayer game. It's the same map that I was using before, and this is my buddy who's just getting his health messed up. He's still figuring out the game. This might be one of the earliest playthroughs that we did together. Uh, he's checking out the houses. I'm checking out, uh, or covering them. And uh, we're going to go upstairs here, because this was the first house that we actually started in. Like, when we figured out that you have to put these bedrolls down, and then you have to claim them, and that's where you spawn when you die. Similar to, say, beds in Minecraft. Um... So we had to do that, but then I'm just moving ahead here to another town. Now my buddy's up in a crow's nest, or a sniper's hole, whatever you want to call those, sniper tower, and we're just cleaning out the town, and he's covering me with, uh, with his rifle, and I'm going down through the town slowly. Right now I'm running with a military-grade uh, maple strike, it's called. It's based loosely on the C7 Canadian rifle, which is relatively close to the M16 sort of style of weapon the U.S. Uh, military uses. We're just again cleaning out the town here, and I gotta I gotta give credits because on top of the fact it's based in PEI, PEI, they also gave us Mountie zombies, which I found really cute. Uh, anyways, so we're cleaning out here. My buddy's just sniping stuff while I'm sni taking out things just to make it a little safer and easier. And I'm just rolling here and checking on my buddy. He's still looking for targets, and I'm just before he's gonna cover me while I'm in the police station. Right now in this version of the game, the zombies don't really move around, they just spawn in their location and wait until they're uh, agitated or aggroed. So, I mean, it's it's fun, but again, I, I think in the future, the version 3.0, they're supposed to be a little bit more aggressive and kind of actively wander around a little bit more, which would make the game a lot more interesting, and I'm hopeful for that. So I'm just moving up here, again, trying to clear out the streets, there's a gun shop at the end of the road there I want to get to. And I think there was somewhere around here, I was just kind of minding my own business sniping zombies, when my buddy started to scream at me. <laughs> and uh, he was getting chased by something and having some problems with it. Where was it? Yeah, just about finished here. Yeah, clean out the street, pull back for a sec, take a look. Uh, running through the house, grabbing stuff. Oh, more civilian bullets. Again, you know, you can kind of just survive scavenging, or you can kind of build a base and it's a little bit more secure. Zombies will attack your base and mess it up if uh, if they do get close to it. Oh, and this is where my buddy was screaming, trying to get him. He's trying to take care of it. He backed up, but he died. And I was like, no! 
Well, it turns out he forgot to get rid of his toxin and he died, so now all his loot's on the ground. So when you die, you drop everything. You start out pretty much buck naked, so I was grabbing what I could of value, and I'd go back to meet him back at our spawn location. So anyway, that was Unturned. I hope you enjoy it. And this is Scott C. Cook saying, keep your head down in the zombie apocalypse.